Coming up next, Frank and Mary in Framingham with your hosts, Grace O'Donnell and me, Art Bergeron. Our guest today, Sarah Viadero, who is the volunteer coordinator at the Callahan Center. Stay tuned. to this episode of Frank and Mary in Framingham. I'm Grace O'Donnell, Director of Elder Services in, at the Callahan Center. And I'm Art Bergeron. I'm an attorney at Myrick O'Connell, uh, where I do nothing but elder law. There are 70 of us, and our closest office is in Westboro. But this show is not about uh, elder law, and it is not about um, me. It is about my friends, Frank and Mary. Uh, their goal in life is very simple. They want to live in their house until they die. They want to be buried in the backyard. And if that's in Framingham, that means they want to be staying right here. So the point of this show is to, is to help them and you know the people that you need to know and the programs that you need to know about in order to stay right here in Framingham. Uh, my co-host on this show is Grace O'Donnell, who finds all these great people to talk to us about a whole variety of programs. She's got a wonderful one today. Grace, whom do we have? Hi, Arthur. Our guest today is Sarah Viadero the volunteer coordinator at the Callahan Center. She joins us today to discuss the many ways that volunteers can contribute to the community, uh, helping people either at the Callahan Center or out in the community itself, people who are 55 and older. So Grace, welcome here. It's, it's wonderful to have you. Although boy, great boy, oh boy, Grace, uh, Grace and Sarah, you must just be buried with work these days. How are you manage? How are you managing all of this with your volunteers all kind of spread out and trying to? How do you do it? Yeah, our volunteers are are wonderful. Um, you know, when the pandemic happened, it first happened. We our goal is just to check in on everybody, make sure everybody was doing okay. Um, you know, thank our volunteers for everything that they you know, did when we were in person and, and are doing now that we're not. Um, so yeah, just a lot of connecting, making sure everybody is hanging in there and um, supporting them wherever we can. So now Sarah, you know, you've been working there for a while and Grace knows you, but I don't. Can you just tell the folks at home? So how did you end up there? And, you know, and how, what did you do before? And why are you, how did you get interested in all of this? Sure. Um, so always have a passion, you know, for, for volunteering, um, working with people. Um, before this, I worked at Lesley University, so I worked with some college students, but in the, in the kind of volunteer community service world. Um, and now I moved out to this area. Um, and so this position, you know, came and, and to work with um, our folks is, has been amazing, working with all these lovely people, um, working with volunteers. It's just something I really care about. Um, so just wanted to continue that work. Um, and how long have you been here? Yeah, so a little over a year. Um, I started last July, if I remember correctly. And um, so, yeah, still still doing it. Grace, how does she do this? How does um, she manage to coordinate all of this stuff? Sarah has been a terrific addition to the center. Her uh, familiarity with technology has really helped us recruit people from larger, uh, a broader base of people than what we were getting before. She has made some great connections with people who uh, are able to teach people technology, which is particularly helpful now where we're trying to get people familiar with Zoom. Um, mm -hmm. I'll let Sarah talk a bit more about some of the folks that she has recruited for those efforts. Oh, great. Yeah, yeah, as Grace mentioned, um, you know, just trying to spread our net a bit wider for volunteers. So we use, um, you know, places like Volunteer Match or other um, online, you know, databases to recruit some volunteers and have really, you know, gained some some amazing people that want to um, work with our community. So that's been really great. And, you know, even as, as we continue to be remote, um, we can post remote opportunities too. So one of them being, like Grace mentioned, um, getting folks to volunteer their time to help help our folks with technology. Um, we know it can be amazing, but it's also really challenging um, to learn that. So we have some volunteers who are just willing to give their time and talk them through Zoom, how to send an email, anything that they may need just so they can you know, stay connected because we know it's really important right now 
Um, so that's been, that, been a big focus for us is just to, to have the volunteers um, assist in that, in that way. And Sarah also did a big push on connecting people over the phone. Mm -hmm. When we first started checking in with seniors who were alone because of the virus, Sarah um, had this great idea of growing our telephone reassurance volunteer program. Yeah, I can speak to that a little bit. Um, you know, we were doing that a little bit, you know, with a few folks, but, you know, when we were so open, folks could come to the center so they could get that connection. And now there were not a lot more folks wanted that, you know, wanted to stay connected with people. Um, so we recruited about 12 volunteers um, to help us do that. So they make, you know, they can call every day, they can call once a week, whatever they decide, you know, fits fits their match. Um, and they call their their partner and um, just chat about whatever, anything that's on their mind, whatever they need. Um, and we've had really great success. You know, every month I check in just to see how, how's it going, um, you know, making sure everything's great and everyone is still happy. They, they did, you know, we really did a good job ma making the matches and they enjoy their, um, their conversation. So very, very pleased with that program. So, that, so that's really interesting. Do, do you, do you, do you, I would suppose that some friendships have evolved, I bet some kind of almost, they're almost like pen pals because they're talking to each other kind of re regularly. Absolutely. Are, are, it's, is, the, is, the, is the same volunteer typically talking to the same person, you know, week to week or month to month? They are. Yep. Um, so we're really, you know, really happy with how that, you know, worked out. Um, it's kind of what we hoped for that they would, you know, create a friendship and you never know what's going to happen, but all of our matches have been really great. And yeah, they just talk about, you know, kids, grandkids, spouses, whatever they, you know, whatever might come down um, pipeline for them. And um, yeah, it's great. I love to hear the stories, you know, they'll say, Oh, we chatted about, my vacations that I used to take or, you know, what movies I'm watching. So it's, um, it's been really wonderful to see. And, you know, we'll, we're, we'll hope that that'll evolve over time. That's great. And, and do the volunteers, I, once again, I, if you don't mind my asking Grace, I'm just, you know, I'm fascinating. So, so do the <laughs> volunteers call you like once a week, do they tune, you know, connect with you regularly also in order to kind of coordinate all of that? Yeah. So in the beginning, um, you know, I was in touch with all of them and, you know, made the matches for them, you know, just gave them a little insight into their person, you know, anything that they need to know. Um, and then, you know, I'm always available so they can reach out whenever they need any, any time a volunteer needs me, um, they can connect with me. Um, and then once a month, I, I do a report for all the volunteer hours. So I'll reach out and just sort of do a, you know, can I get your hours? And then also just a, ch a check in. Um, so at least once a month, they're touching base with me. But often, it's more than that. You know, it's it's so nice when I get an email, you know, from one of the volunteers that says, like, just want to let you know, this is going great. Um, you know, my match is really wonderful. Um, and I love those they, those come in, um, you know, pretty regularly. So and, and for people who are who are listening, who would say to themselves, on, e on either end, you know, yeah. either, oh, that would be great if somebody called me, especially now that you know, people it's kind of getting glum, you know, going into the holiday season and yeah. COVID's back and all this stuff. Yeah. Or on the other end, people who may be saying, geez, maybe, you know, we, we know it's this dark time right now. We got to make it to the spring. You know, it's yeah. like everybody's going, we got to make it to the spring. Yeah. So how, how would those folks connect into this program? Yeah, so um, they can always call the center. So I always say is the first, you know, response, um, they'll get somebody who will connect them with the right person. So if anything else, they just they just call the main center number, um, and they can always contact me. Um, most likely, it'll get directed to me um, on either end, and then we can figure out you know who's the right person to do that. But particularly on the volunteer side, they can always reach out um, and get me, and I can talk them through you know what it looks like and figure out if it's a good fit for them. And are you still looking for vo for additional volunteers at this point? We always are. Yep, we we anticipate just like you said that you know as the winter comes or people get you know, a little lonely, we definitely want to have um, a lot of volunteers, you know, in our, in our pool that we can um, spread out. So, yeah. 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 And Arthur, we, we have quite a range of things that volunteers can do. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a number of people who are very handy with crafts and sewing. So yeah. they've been making the reusable face masks that they then donate. And we provide them to people who don't have masks otherwise. So they're, they're contributing to the health and safety of the community as well. And uh, we actually know that that group has produced thousands of face masks that they have made available uh, across Framingham, even to some businesses uh, as, and some of the long-term care facilities as well. Yep. That's terrific. That's terrific. And, and, and how, do you, how, do you, how do you folks anticipate that 
you know, the, the needs changing or the needs growing over the next, over the next couple of months? Uh, well, I wish we had a crystal ball for that. Uh, none of us really knows how long uh, we will continue with the social distancing, but I think given what we've heard, it likely will be for a few months yet. And, you know, even with the virus, the vaccine, they're still not sure how fully effective it is. So I think this is, uh, you know, a lot of the measures that we're taking now are likely to continue for a while. Wow. And, yeah, really. Yeah. One of the other uh, projects that we have going on is providing Chromebooks to people who don't have them, mm -hmm. uh, in particular to low income seniors in Framingham. Mm -hmm. And a big push is on to get volunteers trained to help them learn how to use these electronic devices and to do things like Zoom. We're especially looking for volunteers who are bilingual in various languages that we can reach out to folks who are, have not been able to make use of these devices or make use of many of the programs that are available on Zoom now. And the other issue is if they have these devices, they may be able to connect with family, friends, or even the medical community for telehealth visits. So can, can you, can, can you or, or, or Sarah just talk a little bit more about that? So you actually have Chromebooks available. Are these on loan? Yes, we'll be loaning them to people for up to 12 months. And we'll also be covering the cost of the data plans. Um, so we're seeking volunteers to help people learn how to use the devices. So we'll be initially training them over the phone. Mm -hmm. And once they get the device with the Zoom uploaded to it, we'll be able to use a, a session like this to actually teach them how to use the device. Wow, that's terrific. And then it, and it really connects them to all of your ongoing programs too, right? So this goes back to a question, a question to Sarah. So how, how is that piece doing in terms of recruiting people who, who are tech savvy, who want to be volunteers, who want to help out, you know, because once again, I, I always, I, now I don't want to be stereotyping, but I know that for myself, this stuff is very challenging. So, and I, and I, although I know there are some, I know we have a friend named Bill Rapkin, <laughs> right? Those yeah. together who seems to be able to figure all this stuff out, you know, yeah. But, but, but how is that going? Are you are you uh, are you in need of more volunteers who have got the, you know that those kinds of tech skills in order to do this outreach? Yeah. So I'll give you a little little history of what we've been doing. Um, you know, so we first we did a, a push just for our you know current volunteers. We sort of said, does anybody you know want to help? Um, you know, are you comfortable? And let us know what you're comfortable with. So we have a, a you know a little list of, of folks who have said, yep, I, I can do email, I can do you know an iPad, whatever it may be that they need. So we have those people um, who are just kind of you know we'll wait and see if we have someone who needs assistance. Um, but I also wanted to give a shout out to one of our partners. Um, we've been working with Definitive Healthcare. And they're an organization right here in Framingham, and we've worked with them before. They would usually come to the center and help us with events or you know uh, larger scale things, but. Obviously, we're not in the center, so we thought we really want to utilize this group that, um, you know, is pretty tech savvy and, and wants to give their time and, you know, really enjoys working with us as, as we do with them. Um, so we have eight volunteers who, who I've, you know, queried and worked with um, who have just said, yep, let me know whatever you need um, when it comes to kind of, you know, tech, tech uh, questions. So anytime a senior calls and, and they chat with Ralph, our computer um, person, and, you know, they say, I need some help with Zoom then I can come and match them, you know, with one of our volunteers who has offered to, to help. So we are always looking for more. I'd love to, you know, get more folks involved. Um, and also, I think it's a win-win for everybody. You never know what you might learn on the other side, too. Um, you know, our definitive healthcare volunteers are uh, on the younger side, but, you know, they also enjoy, you know, talking to folks. So it's it's been a really pleasant experience, I think, for everybody to um, to do this. So we are, you know, actively recruiting anybody who wants to help, um, you know, let me know. And, if you're an organization and you happen to be watching this and you have folks that you want to um, volunteer, we're, we're also happy to work with you. Um, we'd love to, you know, get more partnerships and just get as many people um, in this as we can. So, yeah. Wow. Grace, this is really something. <laughs> so Grace, are you, are you anticipating um, that, that this, that this tech piece of the Callahan center is going to be, just a kind of a constant, even as 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 COVID kind of fades away, because it because it, it's seeming like 
um, well, certainly I know from the perspective of a lot of my clients that, that people are just so much more able to do all of this stuff now. Mm-hmm. So it really increases the opportunities. Well, one thing about that, Arthur, is um, with having the things available on Zoom, if people don't have transportation or if they're not comfortable with venturing out of their own home, they can tap into it in this way. What we're hoping eventually is to be able to do things in person and also have a Zoom version simultaneously Mm -hmm. so that we may be able to have some people there as a live audience because anybody, you yourself, who has performed in front of people, (laughs) you feed off the energy of of the the emotions that people are feeling as you're performing there. So there's, there's a real different feel to that than when something is being projected on a screen. So we're hoping we'll be able to return to that. But for those who, for whatever reason, can't come to the center, we're hoping we can still have these Zoom sessions to supplement that so that people will be able to to still interact. That's great. Yeah. That's really great. And and it, it gives you this ability also to kind of expand beyond the people who logistically can make it to the senior center, you know, or to the Callahan center up to, to this broader audience. I know I, we just did a, um, I just did a, a, a presentation with a, 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 geri- a wonderful geriatric care manager from Martha's Vineyard, you know, who was really terrific. And actually we did it in a show that we were doing in Nantucket where there are no geriatric care managers. So that, to give folks a sense of, you know, kind of what, what the possibilities are for doing stuff. And I've come to realize all of a sudden you have this, this wonderful ability to get this great variety of players involved, you know, and I, and I bet this is going to give Sarah all kinds of opportunities because you've got all these people in Framingham who are retired, who've got all these skills, (laughs) who may be willing to do, you know, a presentation, maybe they wouldn't want to come to the center, you know, but they want to do a presentation of some kind. Yeah. And if I could just add, you know, I mean, I think we have such a wonderful group of volunteers. I'm so thankful for that, that I also want to encourage people to, you know, if you have a question, we have volunteers who can help you, you know, so I don't want anybody to feel, you know, silly or embarrassed about, you know, tech, especially tech questions. Um, I think our volunteers are just, they're ready and able and, you know, it could be a five minute conversation, you know, but maybe they just needed that, you know, quick help. So anything, anything goes, you know, and we'll, uh, we'll always do our best to help anybody. So it could be, you know, an hour long or, or a two minute conversation and it doesn't matter. So, you know, I just, I hope that more people take advantage and, and you know, just get the help that they need. Um, yeah. And, and Sarah on the flip, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Grace. No, I was just going to say the, the other thing is more than just for the fun and games, if you would, it's also opening a door for people to other things like telehealth visits with their medical professionals. Mm-hmm. Uh, people are afraid to go to their doctor's offices Um, But for some people, they're putting themselves more at risk by not following up with some medical issues they have now. So if they get comfortable with the Zoom sessions, even just for, you know, the the um, either the training sessions we do with our volunteers or with the cultural council programs we have, they may be more comfortable than with doing a Zoom with a doctor or a nurse practitioner. And then they can maybe address some medical issues that might otherwise have gone undetected. Right, because they're just more comp- comfortable with the technology in general. Sure. Yeah. yeah, that's 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 really interesting. That's really, in- it's funny, when, it, when, when we did this conversation with the geriatric care manager, she was saying that that's actually become something that they're now doing more, is they're going to the house of somebody who is uncomfortable going to their doctor mm-hmm. so they can be with them during the, during the doctor's visit during the kind of virtual doctor's visit to kind of just, you know, check out, check out. But once again, it's just stuff that you never would have thought of before. Right. Now, can I go back to start with it? Just another yeah. question in sure. terms of your, your, your needs, you know, from what you are seeing, are there particular kinds of volunteers that you're, that you, that you love to see call you tomorrow because you could really use, you know, ABC. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just curious because, yeah. you know, a lot of times yeah. you people at home who are watching this might not guess that, right. that they really ha- that they have could be a real benefit to you folks. Yeah, such a good question. I mean, I think what we've talked about, you know, the tech volunteers and the friendly callers, certainly people who just maybe have some time and want to, you know, want to give back. That would be great. Um, and then I think, you know, we also are, um, since Grace had mentioned, you know, doing some things on Zoom, um, particular folks that are interested in Zoom. 
Um, but if they want to, you know, run a group, you know, we, we want to connect with people. So we've had um, a volunteer run uh, a conversation and humor group and they meet and they just tell jokes and they, you know, chat. And that, that hour a week is such a great connection for folks. So if you're someone and you, I don't know, like to cook and you say, I think it'd be great if we did a cooking group, um, you know, give us a call. And we can, you know, maybe we can get that going and start a little group of people who want to talk about cooking. It's just an example. So anything like that, you know, folks who are interested in um, wanting to get connected and want to help us, um, you know, facilitate something like that would be, would be great. Um, and yeah, I mean, I think, yeah, just, just call us, you know, we'll always try to find something. We're always doing something. We um, just did a big leaf raking initiative to help some folks, you know, get their yards cleaned up. Um, so we were able to do that. Um, so yeah, we, we certainly will take, you know, anyone who calls and um, we'll figure out where to, where to place them. Yeah. You did a leaf raking initiative? We did. Yeah. Um, so fo any, fo any folks who needed, you know, um, their yards cleaned up, you know, during this fall, we had some volunteers come and, um, you know, help them do that. Um, you know, everybody was wearing masks. They were all, you know, doing their, doing the safety precautions, making sure everything was um, up to, up to par, but it was, you know, really great help for these folks who, um, you know, aren't able to do that and need their, you know, need the yards to be cleaned up. So um, we're, we're trying to do, you know, whatever we can to, to support people, um, especially now. So. That's great, Grace. This is really wonderful, Sarah. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's, um, it's great. You know, I know, you know, we don't know when we're going to be back open, but you know, when we are, um, we'll always need volunteers. Our volunteers really are, you know, the lifeline of what we do. Um, you know, when I first started, I, I, I was amazed at how many <laughs> volunteers the center had. And I thought, Wow. And then, you know, as I see things going, it's like they really do do so much for us. And, um, you know, I'm always grateful for them. So we will, you know, do whatever we can to make sure we thank them and, um, you know, help them and um, put them to work <laughs> in, in a good way. So, um, yeah. yeah. And we've had a, a group of volunteers at the center known as the Ask the Experts. And yeah. they are people who help people with computer problems. Mm -hmm. um, so not as much getting into like how to do Zoom, but if somebody's computer is operating slowly, mm -hmm. they will go through and clear out, you know, their cookie history and make sure their uh, uh, virus software is up to date and things like that and make sure that people are uh, increasing their RAM if that is something that their computer needs. So our um, ATE, as we, call, as we call them, the Ask the Experts volunteers, uh, serve a, a vital role. Mm -hmm. And we're looking forward to when they will be able to help people in person with that as well at the center. Mm -hmm. And we, we have other um, programs that happen at various times in the year, like the SHINE program mm -hmm. during open enrollment those volunteers help people figure out which uh, medical insurance plans they should choose. And they also help people throughout the rest of the year uh, make those decisions. And we have the AARP tax volunteers as well who help people from February into April. And we're waiting to hear how that will be handled this year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I suppose they're always, it, 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 some of it is season. It's like you say, the, se the seasonal rate leaving I was right. gonna, or the leaf raking folks. I was going to ask, do you do snow shoveling too? I mean, like, do you guys, do you guys do everything, right? Except that I don't want any senior volunteers throwing out their backs. I don't think I'd be <laughs> as, a, as, a, as, a, as a snow shoveling person, right? I mean, I think, you know, I think I, I'll speak for a little bit for our social services team. You know, if they get requests from folks, you know, we just do our best to see what we can do. So, you know, if we got a request and somebody said, you know, I'm really homebound, I, I could really use you know, some sand or salt or, or some shoveling, you know, we would then turn around it and, you know, try our best to make sure we could help them. So that is where we, you know, might utilize a volunteer to, to do that. So I think that just, you know, something that always inspires me, I think that the work the center does is just really trying to just reach out to folks and make sure everybody's doing well. And um, I think our whole team just really cares about our community. And so we will kind of go above and beyond and make sure we can do what we can, you know, to make everybody um, safe and happy. So um, it's, it's, it's great. I love, love the work. Um, That's great. That's great. Yeah. So, so Grace, thank you very much for, do, for, for doing this and bringing Sarah on. She's another one of your gems, right? <laughs> Absolutely. You showing up with these people. So do you, do you have any, you have any, any final words for people? Grace is as the, as the, as the kind of the uh, executive director in terms of 
who you want to be, well, you know, what, what, what you're looking for for volunteers or what you want to have happening over the next few months? Sure. Uh, well, we're always looking for people who want to help others. That's really what's at the heart, I think, of any volunteer effort. People who are trying to do something uh, to improve someone else's life. And each volunteer role has its own particular skill set. And, um, you know, patience is always something that we uh, would expect from our volunteers and having compassion and caring for seniors and wanting to, you know, help them in whatever way possible. We have a, a lot of different ways people can help out. So if somebody even just has a notion that, gee, I'd like to help the older population, but I'm not sure what I can do, give Sarah a call. She will talk things out with you and she will figure a way that we can put you to use. Yeah. Sure. So that's the message for today, folks, right? And, and you know, one of the nice things you find from the Callahan Center, they're all like Sarah and Grace. These are like these really friendly people. So, you know, if you, if you want to volunteer, give them a call. They're going to find something that you want to be doing that's going to be really helpful. And if you need something, also give them a call. Best phone number, Grace? Is 508 508- Five three two five nine eight zero. That's our ad for the day. Thank you very much, Grace. Thank you, Sarah. So uh, and thank you, and thank you very much for uh, watching. And we'll look forward to seeing you on the next installment of Frank and Mary here in Framingham. Thank you.